Welcome back to Exotic Car Playplace this beautiful Sunday morning and welcome back to Our News is Car News. Today we're going to feature stories from the latest from BMW, the latest from Audi, as well as some highlights from this CES show in Vegas. We're also going to touch on some really interesting technology by Mazda and we're going to share with you the latest updates as to the production of the new C8 Corvette. Let's get into it now. Welcome back to the channel everybody, Mark with Exotic Car Play Play. Firstly, let's talk about some of the newest updates for BMW for 2020. You know, just when you thought BMW couldn't do any better in terms of performance, they go and outdo themselves again. So let's talk about some of the updates for 2020, like the brand new 2 Series Grand Coupe. It comes standard with a 2 liter turbocharged engine that produces about 228 horsepower and is available in xDrive. It will also be available as an M235 with 300 horsepower. It's going to have torsion limited slip front differential for better handling. And of course, in typical BMW fashion, you will see 17 inch run flats all the way around. And another great update from BMW is the M8 Grand Coupe. It'll either come in the two wheel drive as an A40i or the A40i X drive. It's essentially a different car than the coupe. It's going to be longer, taller, wider than the coupe version. Now it's going to come standard with a lot of great options in typical BMW fashion for the top level models. It's going to have a power moonroof, remote start, live cockpit pro with navigation, heads up display, at a 10.3 inch center display, as well as a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. The real juice on the 8 series on the other hand comes in the form of the M8 coupe and convertible, which has the wonderful 4.4 liter twin turbo v8 that wallops a devastating 600 plus horsepower of course you can get in the competition trim which bumps it up to a 617 horsepower naturally in bmw's m territory we're talking about an active m rear differential system with a strong rear bias otherwise it wouldn't be a true m car BMW is also coming out with the new Z4, which is the M40i, which ultimately carries the B58 drivetrain, which is the turbocharged six-cylinder engine that also is shared with the new Toyota Supra, as well as a handful of other models within the BMW lineup. This car will have 382 horsepower strapped to an eight-speed automatic ZF transmission. And all this power driving to the rear wheels. You're going to have M Sport suspension, M Sport brakes, and of course, M Sport rear differential. Now also in 2020, a very controversial new 7 Series is coming out with the massively expanded front kidney grills, new bumpers, new adaptive headlights, new taillights, and a higher hood to sort of accommodate those kidney grills. Now you're going to have two engine choices, a 523 horsepower, 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 that is bolted to an eight speed ZF auto, and you can also get the B58 engine that they utilize in many, many other models that produces about 335 horsepower in the 7 Series trim. Of course, as an optional car, you can get the B7 Alpina, which is essentially a high horsepower tuned version of the 7 Series, can reach 205 miles per hour, and it'll get a massive improvement on standard equipment trim levels. And where BMW is truly getting better, better, and they keep raising the bar is in their M version cars. Now, of course, we are talking specifically the M2 Club Sport now new for 2020. Previous, you had the M2 Competition, which was tough enough to keep traction. Now with the M2 Club Sport, this car features essentially the full bore version of what you'd find in the M4 Competition, which has the 444 horsepower twin turbo, three liter six cylinder engine that'll be still mated to either a six speed manual or a seven speed double clutch transmission, making it truly one of the last real driver's cars in the BMW world. So moving right along, Aston Martin actually had proposed a Rapid E as a full electric supercar for their lineup. Now, this was proposed to come out this year. They touted it as having over 600 horsepower, able to hit 155 miles per hour as a top speed. And with a 65 kilowatt battery, this car was able to attain 200 miles of range. So unfortunately, the latest piece of information that we receive now is that due to financial setbacks, Aston Martin has retracted the offering of this car. So we're hoping within a year or two, once Aston Martin sorts out their financial setbacks, that we're able to see this exciting new electric car on the market. So moving right along, Mazda is actually creating a new inline six cylinder engine based on Sky Active technology. Now the rumor has it, they're not only creating for their own cars, but they're packaging it and they're creating it so that it'll become appealing to many other manufacturers 
who may consider utilizing it in their cars. I mean, after all, Toyota has borrowed the engine and transmission from BMW. Had this happened a couple years prior, who knows? Could have been a Mazda engine in the new Supra. But regardless, suffice it to say, Mazda is moving on and there's suggestions that this same engine may be in some form or another be the engine that goes into the new RX-9, the proposed sports car by Mazda is revisiting. That's right, it is no longer going to be a Wankel engine as rumors have it. Now what's special about this engine? The one key element and that it has an integrated exhaust manifold. So you don't have six different ports coming out creating this mass requirement for space because often exhaust systems take a lot of room they have to flow gradually and to create that pipe work and to exhaust the gases it often takes space but they're creating this new exhaust manifold that's incorporated in the heads and it creates a very very tight profile and is able to allow this engine to be shoehorned in virtually any chassis. Can't wait to see what Mazda is going to do with this. It's very, very exciting. So let's dive into what CES in Las Vegas had for us this year in 2020. Let's talk about a few of the highlights. One very interesting technology that really struck a chord with me is the new Bosch Virtual Sun Visor. Now, historically, you go back in time, sun visors were a flap. They dropped down. It keeps the sun from shining into the driver's eyes or even high beams from oncoming traffic. Well, guess what? Bosch has created this great new innovative technology that sits with a transparent screen in front of your face. So what it essentially is, is a transparent LCD screen and an in-car RGB camera, which actually is meant to track the sun shining into the driver's eyes. Once the camera recognizes the sun shining into the driver's eyes, it darkens that part of the virtual visor to prevent glares. And it actually works, knocks it down at least 90% so you can still partially see through it, but you're not blinded. What an absolutely amazing technology. So how about another great one, the BMW Zero G Lounger Seat. What that is meant to do is it wraps around the passenger, creating a sort of cocoon environment where it's surrounded by airbags. Now it's able to be adjusted 40 or 60 degrees on a decline, but the seatbelt does adjust accordingly. So there's a screen that drops down from the headliner which shows directional information. That coupled with the decline in the seat, it creates a scenario that prevents motion sickness. So you think this is too far-fetched and too far into the future? Think again, BMW is saying that this could in fact be coming out in next generation X7. And another experimental tech comes from Continental and Sennheiser, which essentially converts your whole car interior into a vast amount of speakers. That's right, they do away with conventional speakers and utilizing Continental's actuated sound system, special actuators vibrate the interior panels, such as the dashboard and the A-pillars, door panels and headliners, to ultimately replicate that sound. The ultimate result is an immense surround sound experience that is second to none. It apparently also has another additional advantage and that is weight loss. It actually does away with all the speakers that you typically find in a car and you know what speakers are built of? Magnets and they're heavy. So they're shedding that out of there as well. So there's a secondary advantage. So what's the latest on the new C8 Corvette? Well, that's the wonderful new mid-engine car that has just been highly anticipated, highly sought after, and quite frankly, low in numbers. Now, this car was supposed to come out at the end of 2019. Now, word has it, we're not going to see them on the driveways of proud new owners until February of 2020, which essentially is now. Now, journalists are suggesting the UAW strike at the factory is what created this a little bit of a backlog. The C7 cars still had allocations that had to go out to the field. There were still proud new owners of the outgoing C7. Once that was finished, the C8 had to be retooled in the factory and then that car gets moved out into production. This time frame basically pushed it back two to three months. But I would expect within this first quarter, we'll start to see these brand new C8 Corvettes in production. So now what's the latest from Audi? We've got some great news there. Now, unfortunately, they're doing away with the Cabriolet on the three series cars. So if you really have to have one, you better hustle down to the dealer right away. Pick up what's left in stock because you won't find it again in 2020 and beyond. They're canceling it for North America. Now, that's news. How about the R8? The R8 is getting some fine tuning. You get the higher output version of the V10 car will produce over 600 horsepower, which really is the car to get. It's also going to see a subtle facelift on the tail end, the front spoiler, which is going to make that car stand out as unique. 
for 2020. But the big news is the RS6 Avant. That's right, historically you could only get these cars in Europe. Now what's happened is Audi's created this car and released it so that it's available to the North American market. So what is the RS6 Avant? Well, it's essentially their mid-sized car. It has a four liter twin turbocharged V8 engine that makes about 590 horsepower and launches this animal from zero to 60 in about 3.5 seconds. It should be blisteringly exciting to drive. The only downside is for the purists often who like to drive a manual gearbox and roll their own gears, this car is only featured with an 8-speed automatic. Now with standard adaptive air suspension and the bulletproof quattro all-wheel drive system, this car will be as aggressive in the corners as it is in a straight line. But don't expect this car to come at good value at over 100 grand US. You will have to dig really deep into those pockets to be able to buy one of these new RS6 Avants. Another really exciting car from Audi is the new e-tron, which essentially is their full plug-in electric car. Now expect it to cost around that $70,000 US or about $100,000 Canadian, but it's going to have about 360 horsepower and tow about 4,000 pounds, so it'll be versatile as well. It should be very exciting with a heads-up display and a massaging seats, a much vastly improved leather interior, if you can believe that for Audi, and even power door closers. It's obvious their target is Tesla. Hopefully Audi gets some of these little glitches out of the way and puts a production car that is worthy of the name. One little hint though, if you're going to buy these or order it, if you live in any of the northern states or Canada, don't forget there is a cold weather package which gives you heated rear seats inside the car, adaptive windshield wipers with heated washer jets so they don't freeze over. So thanks a lot everybody. Hey guys, if you enjoy this new series on Sunday mornings about car news, be sure to hit the subscribe button down there as well as the notifications bell. We'll let you know when the next great video is out. As well as drop a line. I'd love to hear what you think. And let me know if there's any specific car topics you'd like to hear about or news items. Hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.